What's the plan? That's good. That's good. Not to get a little bit. Uh, have a few extra drinks in the we going to have. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We're going to play a couple of songs, do a couple of poems, maybe do a little bit of comedy after a thing. So like in, in me. So let's, let's see. Let's see how it goes. All right, cheers. Man.
the pain versus pleasure that arises from moments like this. That one perfect kiss. Is it worth all the woes? I come when she goes on living her life without me. But hiding from love, just in case it will last, is like taking a shark from the sea. We were sent here to love by some power above. To avoid it would be a great sin, like throwing your heart in a bin. Do you have it for a reason? So if she's physically pleasing, just start up a convo. And if your heart plays the bongos, you may as well shoot your shot. You don't have her now, so you're not risking a lot. But if she says no, then the illusion will go, and you can no longer dream in a fantasy. But if you just do nothing to avoid a slight hurt, then nothing will happen, can't you see? If you keep on living by refraining from giving the love that your heart wants to spread, if you hold yourself back from your plan of attack, then your heart might as well be dead. That's the first part. That's the first part. The next part is called Thank You. From Limerick. You're from Trini. My dad works in Trini. And he tried to turn his song to get there. So we're basically cousins. I missed you at the last Christmas. Where is my invite to Christmas for God's sake? I, I'm banned from my own Christmases because of my political views, so I need I need somewhere to go for Christmas when I move home. <laughs> yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you for breaking my heart. Thank you for cutting it off before I got a chance to start. Thank you for firing me from my job. Thank you for saying those things that caused me to sob. Thank you for delaying my train. Thanks for seeing me outside and sending the rain. Thanks for encouraging me to smoke. Thanks for making me forget the end of my joke. Thanks for stealing the girl. Thanks for ordering that shot that pushed me to hurl. Thanks for burning my skin. Thanks for making me drink that gin. That gin that turned me into a loser. She was my everything and it made me lose her. Still, thanks for making me drink. Thanks for the psychedelics that taught me to think. Yeah. Thanks for killing my friend. How else would I know that all good things must end? Thanks for all the money that I've blown. Thanks for the moments of feeling alone. Thanks for the current that pulled me under. Thanks for the equation of feelings of hunger. Thanks for the good things, but mostly the bad. Happiness is nothing if you never felt sad. Each more is a lesson that needs to be learned. How can you heal if you've never been burned? I said, so the next songs I was at, I sang last week, and that song right is the only song I know on guitar because I I, 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 actually don't know how to play guitar. I don't even have a guitar. I just in, in college I saw my friends playing that song and they were having sex, so I was like, Fuck them. I want to do that. I need that to happen to me. That sex thing sounds fucking great. So I learned right away and then I started happening. Not too often, but it happened every now and again. So, so these songs, I actually, I actually don't fucking, I've, I've never played them before. So I wrote them out and I wrote the fucking chords and we'll, we'll see what the fuck happens. All right. So slow. 
When no one steps on my dreams, there'll be days like this. When people understand what I mean, there'll be days like this. When you bring out the changes of how everything is. It's called drink. Drink won't fucking let you down. Drink won't go off with your best friend. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You're not my best friend. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great sin. Makes you feel decent, makes you eat food without tasting. Even better when you can get your mates in. Makes you feel great, sin. Going hanging out, just still walking around shaping. Beer number four is like pulling a grenade pin. Would you get the fuck? Feeling kind of low, would you get the fucking beer, sin? What harm? A lot better than getting the fucking tears in. But you want to watch out or you get lost in the sauce. That's when you're no longer the boss. Now you start making decisions that don't make sense. The notes in your pockets reduce a few cents. Everything you work for is come and went. Looking for answers at the bottom of the bottle. You can't live your life full of throttle. Every big gearbox will blow or the cut your brakes. You'll be left alone with nothing but aches. But you can't beat that feeling of ultimate healing. Maybe next year I'll finally give up the beer. Probably fucking nothing. Probably fucking nothing. I, so I, I, I live over in Toronto right now, so I'm from near my cousin's right. place down right. there, right. 30 minutes from Tralee there. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but I, I live over in Toronto and I work in a bar, so I'm around booze all the time. Like. I'm around booze all the time. And my, my, mother, my, mother, my mother called me on the phone, she said, Darren, does it affect you when you're drinking all the time, or when, you, when you're working on the weekends and your friends are out drinking? I'm like, mom, I'm behind the bar, I'm the only one not paying for drinks, I'm the drunkest motherfucker in the place. Don't worry about my Saturday night. But she got angry. She got angry at me. She said, Darren, please don't tell me you're drinking at work. That's the first sign of being an alcoholic. I said, Mom, I was divorced at 26. What kind of fucking angel did you think you raised? <laughs> but she still got mad. She still got more angry. She said, Darren, you know the family you come from. Do not, all the books say drinking at work is the first sign of being an alcoholic. Your dad's an alcoholic. He's going to go to an early grave from it. Your grandfather's an alcoholic. He died from it. Your brother went to fucking rehab. Look at the state of him. And know yourself, you're going to follow the same path. You really need to think about your life. And I did think about it. And it really, it resonated with me what she said. And I knew I needed to make a life change. And that, that phone call was about two years ago now. And I'm proud to say that I never, ever spoke to my mother again. <laughs> oh, here we go. She can't find me here. She can't find me here. I came over here though, I did I came over here to sort my life out, like to fucking get fucking get sober. I was so I was sober for a week, I started get sober, stop the cigarettes, stop all that, do a bit of yoga. The only thing the yoga has done it means I can smoke a fag with my foot now instead of my head. I never given up cigarettes. I, I, I only started to smoke when I, I started to smoke when I was 31, like I'm 32 now. If anyone else had said to you tonight doesn't tell you that I'm fucking retarded. Then you fucking 31, starting smoking at 31. You all, 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 all your life people tell you cigarettes kill, kill you, cigarettes kill you. People have been giving up years ago. The warnings on the packets, and I'm like, give me a fucking feeling. But I, I thought it was something that was a terrible. I thought smoking wasn't good, wasn't actually nice. I thought because everyone you speak to, they're like, I'm gonna give up soon. I hate these. I'm gonna give up soon. They smell bad. They fucking make me smell bad. They make me feel bad. I'm just addicted. So I thought it was things that were terrible, but you're just addicted to it. You can't stop. I was fucking wrong. They, they're absolutely fantastic. They're fucking good. But I've done a few things in my life. Like I've, I've ran marathons. I've done, I used to be a fighter. I've learned how to be a comedian. 
kind of fucking play the guitar badly. But I was like, fucking, I was looking at myself, and like, people are saying that quitting smoking is one of the hardest things you can do in your life. Even people that, like, I know heroin addicts. I'm like a comedian in Canada, I know the worst of the worst. Like. And even they say, uh, quitting heroin is bad, but like, smoking is the one thing. Like, I'd never want to see heroin again, but anytime I see someone smoking, I want to have a fight. So I thought, look, I'm going to test myself again. I'm going to try it, and I'll pick up smoking just to see if I can quit. And I can't. But I couldn't give a bonus. I, I, I like the meditative thing of it. You know when you're smoking on your own? You're just looking off into the sky? Because I like to think of jokes and I think of stories. So I'm like, it's like a form of meditation for me. So I'm smoking, but if you ever, if you're ever on the street on your own, like I live in Toronto, so like on Queen Street where there's people walking up and down, if you're just standing on the road with your hands in your pockets, just looking around and looking into space, people will think, we need to call the police. Like there's a fucking pedophile on the loose here. But if you have a cigarette, if you have a cigarette in your pocket and you're just standing there, they're like, what's that lad doing? And then you just fucking take a drag. And they're like, oh, he's just having a cigarette. And then you can watch all the kids you want. <laughs> I think I'm going to jump off at that. I'm going to jump off at that. So next we have gender melody. Let's get a big hand for gender melody.